All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today we're going to take a look at the Shure PSM 1000 Diversity In-Ear Transmitter Receiver Set with an in-ear belt pack um, versus a Electrosonics M2 Duet or Duet um, Digital In-Ear Transmitter versus the Shure, which is an analog. Uh, I'm not going to get into the actual feature sets that you can look up and the stuff that shows in the specs and all that. Um, these things do different stuff, uh, different um, features that um, you can figure out. I'm going to look at the stuff that doesn't necessarily show up in the spec sheet that may or may not affect your decision or just be fun to be aware of. So let's start off with pink noise. I've got my sound bullet here. I'm running in this little mixing board. Um, I've got a scope over here, which will um, show up on this little GoPro. I can put that up in the video in a bit. Um, here's the Duet transmitter and the Shure transmitter. Uh, this is a uh, tone and pulse generator. I've got this set up to do a pulse, square wave pulse, which we'll see on the scope in here. Um, I've got a Tascam recorder recording the signal before and after the transmission. So it's coming out of the console into this and also into the gear and it's also coming out of our little test rig here uh, where I can plug this in various places and this will um, send to the other channel be able to hear the after. Uh, I've got smart set up over here on the laptop and I will be able to bring that into visuals as well and we'll store some curves. So Let's start with pink noise, and I'll bring that up here and here. We should start to see it. And on the scope, it's showing up here as a blue line, and um, you may you can't really see it, but I'm seeing uh, about three LEDs on the Shure unit. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, and we should be able to see it here as soon as I plug this in. So we'll plug this into the Shure transmitter pack and turn it up and I've got my headphones hooked up here as you can hear slightly probably and uh, we can see the um, response curve on the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and um, uh, so we'll look at the frequency response. We've got a little roll off of the low end, happening around 50 or 50 cycles or so. And there's a considerable roll off, uh, a little bit quicker, a lot quicker, happening around 14.3, 14.5K, dipping down at a hole here um, at 18K. And then we see a spike, which is the pilot tone at 19K, um, which is common for stereo transmission. All right, so there's the Shure belt pack with pink noise. Let's go ahead and look at the front panel. Oh, before we go to that, I'm going to I've got my headphones plugged in so I can hear them and it's going to the test gear. I'm going to unplug the headphones and see if we see any difference in the uh, analyzer and the scope. And we do not. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, look at that. We gained a little bit of volume. There's a slight uh, increase in level on Smart there when I unplug the headphones and when I plug it back in. So the headphones are dragging it down a little bit. Uh, we'll test both because we do typically have some in-ears, varying impedance in-ears, uh, plugged into this, so that's relevant. And also the impact that they have, if I was to test without the headphones, that might not be real world. So we kind of look at the two. I guess while we're here, we'll go on to the transfer function. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And we should be able to see it. Oop. And there we go. And now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to find the delay time so that we can look at the latency of these. So this delay time is showing up as 0.15 milliseconds. Um, to get us in, polar in phase throughout the middle region here. And we can see our transfer function frequency response is rolling off at 50. 
uh, very similar to what we saw in the RTA. And let's go ahead and save this curve. All right. Next, we'll go on to the front panel of the Shure transmitter. So this is uh, the reference point that's built into the front. And um, we can turn this gain. The gain's a little different, but um, let's not worry about that because that could easily be just where the pot, pot was. So I'm going to bring up the gain, match this a little here. And the transfer function for the front panel is different, as I showed in another video. Uh, it's got a little more roll-off on the front panel than it did in the pack, and a little different high-end response. Let's go ahead and save that. Latency is now 0.06 um, instead of 0.15. Let's try our headphone disconnect, and we'll go back to the spectrum for that, since we used that before. And we'll save our spectrum. And let's go ahead and unplug the headphones and see what happens. And that's interesting. So the headphone loading on the front of the Shure PSM-1000 is quite different than the loading on the belt pack. The belt pack holds its level pretty well, whereas this is uh, being affected more by the loading. Uh, I don't know if that really matters, but it's interesting. Uh, probably some resistors in the headphone out. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that. But uh, I'm not going to save it. That's without the load and with the load. Frequency response does not seem to change too much. Okay, so we've done the front panel and the belt pack of the Shure PSM-1000. Um, let's go ahead and look at the same thing for the Duet. So, front panel of the Duet. And I'm going to bring that up. Now look at that. Here we see the frequency response, the low frequency response is extending quite a bit further. It's going down all the way as low as um, this is measuring and it's staying very flat. It's flatter, there's not a, there's not a bump in the low end. And, but at the top end, it's actually dying out earlier. It's um, cutting off at about 11.4K um, versus the um, uh, you know, 13, 14K, 14, 15K of the Shure. Uh, so it's flatter, it goes lower, and um, has less uh, upper top end. Um, whether that matters or not for the application. Oh, now let's try the headphone disconnect and see what happens. Let me save that. And I messed that up. And let's unplug this. And we see uh, no change at all. I mean, it's really stable. We're not seeing any difference from loading and unloading that um, off the front panel. I mean, off the belt pack. Let's go ahead and do the front panel of the duet. Duet. Is it duet or is it duet? Um, um, now what we're seeing is almost the exact same response it's dropping off in the high, but then it's coming back. So they didn't, the filtering's a bit different in the top end. Um, so there's like more 19K um, that they cut out. It doesn't come through the belt pack, but it's coming through the um, front panel there. Let's go over to the transfer function. And um, I didn't, I'll store this one, then I'll go to the other one. So this is the transfer function and you can see that our phase is very very out of whack here so i'm going to find the uh, uh, time for this and for this it's 1.44 milliseconds of uh, latency coming off the front panel of the duet, duet um, whereas we saw 0 0.06 coming off of the Shure PSM-1000. 1.4 milliseconds, it's about a millisecond a foot, -ish, so it's about 18 inches of time delay um, because of the digital trans uh, transformation there. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? The low frequency response is razor flat all the way through and it's rolling off in the highs. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, 
Let's take a look at the belt pack. All right, so we're seeing really on the transfer function an identical response, but not an identical time latency. So let's find this latency and it says 1.88, I believe. Um, my eyes can't make it out in the glare here. Yeah, about 1.88. So slightly different latency coming off the belt pack than it was off the unit itself. Um, and it looks almost identical in its um, frequency response for the transfer function. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll go back to spectrum. All right, so there's the four scenarios, belt pack and uh, front panel for both units with pink noise. Uh, the battery lights lighten up on the uh, duet here, and uh, I do have some spare batteries in my pocket. I'll change them out. These, um, and that should be brought up, the battery life, um, the duet definitely, rec you have to use lithium batteries uh, in order to get longevity. It uses a lot more power than the P um, PSM-1000, which you can use alkalines in. Um, for these tests, since I'm using these things for hours on end and messing around and setting everything up, I'm actually going through a stack of old batteries that uh, came out of in-ears from tours and stuff. And so they're about half-life batteries. So um, they're not only gonna burn through batteries, they're gonna burn through faster here than they would normally. I'm gonna get rid of these pa uh, batteries really quick. And we'll put them conveniently on the floor. Put another pack in here because I knew this was coming. Um, all right. Next, let's turn off the pink noise. And we will turn on the pulse. And I will bring you over to the scope here. Let's look at the scope. And this top yellow line in the scope is the output of the belt pack. So if I turn this down at the belt pack, we'll see that yellow line go down and come back up. This blue line is what's being sent into the inputs of the transmitters. And the pink line is the signal before it goes into the mixing board. So we can see that that pink line on the bottom is a beautiful square wave, very, very um, distinct. As soon as it gets into this little mixing board, it turns into this spiny thing where it can't hold the DC uh, offsets because they, you know, there's DC blocking in these audio um, units, which is fine. And it's still for a square wave going through audio, seeing a sharp spike up, a ramp down that's not overshooting a lot, and a sharp spike down coming up. So what we're seeing with the duet, duet is... Um, the signal that's going into it, the yellow signal, looks almost exactly like, um, I mean, the blue signal, what's going into it, it looks almost exactly like the yellow signal that's coming out. Uh, that's great stuff. And if we go over here to smart, we can see that we have a smooth falling line and um, uh, roll off in the high frequencies as expected. And this kind of low, this high to low roll off from the pulse I find it very useful because that's kind of way music looks on analyzers when we're actually mixing live. So I find it, and then also the pulse is very dynamic versus pink noise, which is consistent. So it brings out some of the uh, differences in the units we don't see with pink noise. So I'm gonna save that. Um, and we'll go over to the transfer function. Okay, now spectrum, we're looking at transfer function. Let's go ahead and set our time. So, find delay and insert. Okay, uh, there's our transfer function with the pulse. Uh, let's go on to look at the, sure. First we'll use the belt pack. Oh, before we go to sure, let's go to the front panel. Um, this is interesting. Uh, first of all, we got a time delay to look at. Find. 
insert. Um, look at the waveforms. That yellow waveform is what's coming out of the front panel. Um, for some reason, um, the front panel output of the headphone jack on the Duet is out of polarity with the belt pack. Um, everything else is in polarity and there's a polarity reverse in the front panel headphone. Don't know if that's that big of a deal, but it's interesting. We're also seeing some fuzz on the um, waveform there, which is some high frequency, um, very, that's very high frequencies judging by what it looks like. Probably not audible, definitely. Uh, I was unable to hear it, but it's um, um, high frequency noise. So some sort of noise is coming out that isn't filtered. Um, don't know if it's a big deal, but we can see it. Next, let's go to the short. So we'll go to the front panel. I mean, the uh, belt pack. And let's take a look at the spectrum. All right, so the spectrum is this green line. We can see that it's actually not the same shape as it was going through the duet. Let's turn this down. And look at that. As I turn it down, it levels out and starts to follow the response. And we saw that in another video. Basically what's happening is um, uh, the compander is altering the frequency response of the waveform at higher levels. I've just got one LED on the um, unit here on the send. As I bring it up, we can see that the compander is um, uh, compressing the highs more than it is the lows. Uh, tell you what, I'm at the near 20 minute mark. I'm going to continue this in a part two. So I will see you shortly.